So here is the block that we did for August and I just absolutely love this matchup. It looks so beautiful. We actually ran out of some of the fabrics or got very close to running out of some of the fabrics for doing this. So if you want an extra block, be quick to let us know. Um, okay, so we are going to do this block, whichever one you want to point at, they're all the same. And this right here is our border. As always, we do borders, so make sure to keep that set aside for your border. This is going to be what we use for the center block, and this is going to be what we use for those outer pieces here. So let's start taking notes about what pieces you are going to cut and for what, because when you get an entire quilt pattern, I know it can be a little confusing to do um, the notes without some help. Here are all of your notes. Note that I crossed out the top two because we're not making the whole quilt. And of course we don't need these as well because those are for the entire quilt. Okay, so here's what we do need though. This four and a half inch square, we need one of that from your main fabric, which is this one. All right, then we need, oops, I didn't write down your number. So give me a second, we'll go right back to that. But this one is gonna be your orange and this one's gonna be your dark coral. Now you can switch these, it doesn't really matter, but you do have to do them for this one. You don't, you can't substitute all four of the colors included. Okay, then on fabric F, it's the two and a half inch squares. We're using our green, which is one of the PNB suede's, and you need 12 of them. Uh, for this one here, which is the paw prints light brown on the original pattern, we're using the white pumpkins and you need four squares. There's your size. Okay, and then right here on the stone dress color, we're using the stone bumbleberries basically. And you need 20 squares, which measure two and a half inches. Okay, so then let's really quickly grab how many, yeah, four of each, that's what I thought, okay. So you need four of each of these on your rectangles, two and a half inches by four and a half inches on each of these. And that, those are gonna be these here. We just didn't do green, so anyway. So our green is gonna be here on this side. Our stone will be all of these lighter colors here that are around. And then this green here and that green here will be these two in really whichever order you want to do them. I think I'm gonna put my orange on the inner and I'm gonna put my darker coral on the outer more because I like the way these two touch each other and this one actually you know what I could switch them oh my gosh it doesn't really matter because this is gonna touch those you know what I think that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put these two together so this one here is gonna be my main center and I'll do the dark coral grunge um, here around it and then this one here, the pumpkins, which are in all four corners, I'll do the orange here for those. Okay, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I change things multiple times only because, again, that's sort of the way my OCD works. But let's get cutting. This is a lot of the times how I cut my squares. This is a packed print, so I can just lay my ruler on top of here and cut around all four sides, and then I have my four and a half inch square done right away. Up there in the corner are those four and a half inch squares totally cut using this bad boy. And so then our orange and dark coral need to be two and a half by four and a half. So there again, I use this ruler. I have these two layered and Then I just line them up right there and cut exactly what I need because here I've got two and a half and then four and a half this way. Okay, so this is what it looks all cut out. Okay, these are your 20 squares of the bumbleberries that we're using for fabric H. These are your 12 squares of green that we're using for fabric F. And these, I layered them when I cut them, so they're, anyway. Uh, so these here are fabrics D and E, however you choose to order them. Again, that's your border. 
and then here you've got your main square and then these are the four outer squares and that over there is your extra so let's get working on sewing okay um we are going to start with the outer squares which is this right here so go ahead and take all of these and go ahead and take all of these and do your diagonal lines on the backs. That'll just make that easier because then it will be ready for when we do the flying geese as well. You just might as well just get it all done. Anyway, so as you note, you're going to have one that looks like this, okay? Then if you look at it going around, so you're going to have one that looks like that where whatever color you put here, oh sorry, nope, that is green, yep. So where the um, beige stone ones are here and then the green is there, which is the bottom right. Then on this one, you're gonna have the beige slash stone on these edges, but the green in the bottom left. And then here the green's in the top left and here the green is in the top right. So just make sure that you pay attention to that. Don't do all four squares um, out of this color because that's not the way it's supposed to look. Um, okay, so let's just get started doing that. Make all of your lines and then work on chain piecing. Now that all of these diagonal lines are marked, um, now I'm going to start actually putting together, sorry, I have to move my pattern piece, this actually right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and I'm going to chain piece as many as I can. So remember that we talked about um, how, for example, the green one here, okay, rotates. So your green one is right here. So I'm gonna chain piece these, and I'm gonna put a stone colored one in the top left of three of them, and I'll put a green one in the top left of one. All right, then I'm gonna stop. I'm going to unchain piece them using my gizmo. I'm going to trim them as you always do and then press, okay? Then I'm gonna go back and I'm going to do the top right. And on one, two, three of them, I'm gonna put a stone one. But see on this one where there's a stone one in the top left, I need to put a green one in the top right. Then I will stop, trim that seam, press, and then I will do a stone one in the bottom left of this one, this one, and this one. But this one up here needs to have a green one. So that's kind of how you need to do it. I will definitely stop my process and show you each step of the way, but I wanted to sort of explain that. So let's get started. And I'm going to do the stone in the top left of three and the green in the top left of one. So now I have the top left, let me unpiece them because that makes it easier to see that they're correct so that you can make sure you did yours correct. So here we go. One with the top left. Doing this one handed is always comical every month when I do these videos. Okay. And another one with the top left. Woohoo. And this one. Another one with the top left, those three are your beige stone ones, whatever you want to call it, and the one remaining is your green one, okay? So I'm going to trim those now, and by trimming, just to remind you, what I'm going to do is cut about a fourth of an inch right here. You can do it with your rotary cutter and a small ruler, or your scissors, either way works. I'll press those, and then I'm going to work on that top right one. And again, remember that we need to have one of them that will go here has the top right as a green. Okay? All right, let's so get now started. these are pressed, and goodness, they look awesome. And I have them in the direct order that I need them. Okay, let me explain what I mean by that. So, block one, this one, needs a top left beige. Okay? Block two... That one needs top left beige. If you're going clockwise, block three, the top left needs to be green. And block floor, four, goodness, not floor, the top left needs to be beige. Stone, again, whatever you wanna call it. So that's how I keep myself in order 
is I keep my stack always in the order that I am going around. That way I know that, for example, I'm doing the top right now, so when I get to the fourth block on the bottom, I'm going to put a green one in that top right section. So, okay, let's so do that. Now part. all the top ones are done, and by the way, you can cut your seams here. I cut them a little wider than one fourth inch. You can cut them whatever, it doesn't matter um, whether you cut them one fourth inch or not. So I have all of those top ones done in the correct order. Okay, so now working around then, I'm going to do the um, bottom row here, okay? So on my first one, when I do the bottom right, if I'm working clockwise around the little block, my first one here has to be green. So I'm gonna put that green one there and sew it, but on all the other ones, my bottom right is the beige or stone color one. So let's get those done. Now I have that third one on and following the order of the block here, this one will be that top left block and this one will be the top right block, and this one will be the bottom right block, and this one will be the bottom left block. So now we just need to add all of our bottom left squares as so, stitch them on, trim the seams, and press. So now that all of these are done, here's what I typically do. Let's move these over here. I prefer quilting this way because it really helps keep me organized. I'm going to move these over here because we're going to be working with these to create all the flying geese triangles next and we need a bunch of them. I'm going to put my pattern up here and I'm going to scoot my rulers back there. I'm going to put my border back here. I'm going to close that so I don't cut my finger off keep my chain piece over here because I need it and I'm gonna decide let's see I think I'm gonna do this direction because you can sort of see that and I want it to look like it's completely right side up okay now I'm going to arrange this the way it needs to be I may even have to move things again to have enough room and that's okay oh, perfect and I can just put the border up there because that's gonna be the border all right, move my chain piece really quickly. Okay, awesome. And we are off to a really good start. That is so pretty. Okay, now I'm going to gently lay this pattern here. Okay, and I'm going to flip these. Perfect. Okay, so we can show you what we're going to do next. Okay, what we're going to do next is we are going to do all of these with both colors. Okay, because remember we have this color here. Both of them. I love them both. I love the grunge, but then grunge is just one of my favorites. Okay, perfect. Beautiful. Okay. So, um, all right. Now, we need to do the same number for each one. However, what we are doing is one of them uses these and one of them uses these. So that's why I've got the colors separated. All right. Personally, um, I think I like this. I'll just sit on that because the leaf of the pumpkin is green and the pumpkin is orange typically. I know we're working with white pumpkins here, but I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do these two together. And so this is going to be this part here. Yep, I think that's what I'm going to do. The orange and the green will be the inner flying geese here, and the beige and the dark coral grunge will be the outer. Yep, that's what we're going to do. Okay, so we're going to set all of these over here. Flip that over so I don't forget because it's similar enough. 
and we're just going to sit here and do all of these. Typically when I'm doing flying geese triangles, I chain piece them all. I typically sit here and lay them all out where they should be. I'm not going to worry about being exact because I'm still working one-handed since I'm using my phone. thing is to make sure that I put the diagonal going the right direction. You can fussy the rest later. Here's my last one. And there we go. It's going to be like that. So I'm going to sew all of those and then I'm going to trim them as so and then press them and then I will go back and do the right side. Here we go. So these are all done and very neatly pressed and so again copying what I did just a second ago I'm going to lay all of these down. I don't know why I'm trying to be so exact one-handed but maybe it's just force of habit. Put them there. Okay, perfect. There we go. So let's get all those sewn and then we'll trim them and press them and then we will work okay, on Okay, so now these are all done and very neatly pressed. I'm not going to lay them around the block because I have to sew them to these before they go in their specific, specific location needed around the block. So, all right, let's go ahead and get these all laid out. on there because trying to get them exact one-handed is still not working for me. Okay, perfect. So we're going to sew all those on there the same way we did the orange and green ones and we are going to trim them and then press them and then add the right side. So now that we have those flying geese triangles done, this is what we need to do. So the coral and stone slash beige flying geese triangle set to the orange and green one. So I've got them lined up here and I'm just going to chain piece these all the way down and then I will use my trusty gizmo and separate them and press them and then I will lay them where they need to go here. So again, lay them this direction and then we will get them all set up. Um, oh, you know what? It might help. Let me give you one little tidbit first. Okay, so see this one is going to lay that way. So let's just make sure. Yep, they can all turn the right direction. I just wanted to make sure that when we were sewing them, they all do rotate the same way. I've had a couple of quilts where I had to make sure to orient all of the flying geese the right direction. So when I turned them around the block, it didn't mess up things. The nice thing is we're not using anything that's directional, so we should be good to go. All right, let's okay, get that. Set. So now we want to lay the block out like this so that we can sew all of these together one at a time and then sew the rows together. So I've got them laid out here and I kind of just love it already. It's gorgeous. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these together here. I chain piece that. Then I stop and I trim my threads and I press and then I add this one here this one here and this one here. That for me is the fastest way to get it done and minimizes thread usage. So let's work so on that. That is done and I'm going to sew these blocks to this side all the way down, press, and then I'll be ready to add the rows together. It's coming together beautifully. So this is all done now and I'm just going to sew the rows together. It's looking really awesome everybody. My points look pretty good. I'm happy with them. I am pretty OCD about my points, so I'm very known for ripping stuff out and redoing that point if I don't like it. Um, so we're going to sew 
this one to this one and then we'll press and then we'll sew this one to this one and we'll press and then we will work on our border up there. So this is all put together now and we just need to do the border. Now, because this block is a little bit bigger, we included two pieces for you. We included a full strip, inch and a half wide, and we also included this strip because we knew that you would need it. So remember, as always, that when you are working with a border, that you do the left and the right first, and then the top and the bottom. So let's get that done, and then we will be all finished. It's done. And I absolutely love this one, as I love all of them that we do. But this one, I don't know. It's very traditional in terms of the coloring for fall. But I absolutely would use this as a center of a table for the fall season. Um, it's gorgeous and it really works all the way through Thanksgiving. So I hope you really enjoyed sewing this one and we will work on the next block soon.